if you're traveling in the North Country Fair. I'm Ed Pavlich, I'm the uh, director of the Creative Writing Program. Um, for the second time, the first time I was director of the program was when I first arrived to UGA in 2006. And of course, um, immediately became a colleague with, with, with Judith, um, who was really one of the first people, of course, that I uh, knew to associate with this university when it came across my radar. And of course, um, through the years, whenever I would travel uh, to another university or another city for whatever literary event, um, that, that tradition continued. Uh, it would be, oh, you work where? Oh, do you know Judith? You know. Um, and I was constantly uh, found myself in the position, in fact, the wonderful position of bringing her back hellos from all around the, the country, even the world. Oh, you're going back to Athens? Tell Judith I say hello. So I would bring back some from this now famous writer or that now famous writer. Oh, so-and-so says hello, Judith. And she would say, oh, I remember him when he was a baby. <laughs> yeah. He came to me clutching some folder of poems, shaking. Or uh, I remember, uh, yeah, I won't mention these names, but uh, a, a younger woman writer who had told me, oh, Judith, you meant so much to me. Tell her hello. And I went to her office, this blazing office, you know, in a rather dreary building. Um, and, uh, oh, Judith, you know, to tell you hi from so-and-so. <gasps> She's my daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to read you a, a, a moment um, statement that one of Judith's graduate students sent me uh, recently, uh, yesterday. Um, before that, uh, I want to just say just something. Barbara did it far better than I uh, ever could, and, and certainly uh, wouldn't even try to do it that way. But I wanted to say something about um, the core of my impression of Judith was this fierceness. Um, but a multidimensional fierceness, a fierceness really that comes from a determined refusal not to feel. And um, no matter who you are, but if you're that tall, a non-white woman, and a creative writer in a university setting in the 1980s or 90s, that refusal not to feel is really some fearsome thing. And then, of course, if one is to succeed, survive, teach, love, one has to, uh, of course, accompany that refusal to feel with, refusal not to feel with a, uh, with a fierceness. And Judith's profile and her signature presence in the world um, came with that. And that wasn't always easy uh, for her, nor for others to deal with, but, but that's what it was all about. And I, I thank Barbara for a, a, a wonderful sense of that. Uh, one more thing, I remember when, uh, when I first met Judith, I came down here to interview for the job, you know, and she was telling me about the program and people in it. And she got around to Reg McKnight, who's not here today because he's also recovering from illness. But, uh, um, and Reg is like the opposite of Judith because he's this tall, you know. <laughs> um, but where Judith is kind of like kicking down doors and Reg is this big, but he's kind of cowering in the corner. <laughs> Uh, so they're a, great, they're a great pair for that reason. They've known each other for years and years and years. And um, so I, she was telling me about people. She said, well, she got to Reg. Well, I'll just say, with Reg McKnight, let me just say one word, sweetness. And she's absolutely right. So here is a statement that Ida Stewart sent me. Ida Stewart uh, graduated from the PhD in English. I was Judith's student. Um, I think she graduated in 2013, it's about three years ago, and she wrote, I first met Judith as a student in her graduate workshop at fall of 2009. She became not only my professor and mentor, but also my collaborator and dear friend. I have many favorite memories of our time together, but I have to select one memory that captures Judith's essence as an educator, writer, and human being. I see her up on stage at the Georgia Museum of Art, welcoming her undergraduate students, families, and friends, to what will be an inspiring reading of their poems and short fiction. I hear the unwavering and proud timbre of her voice 
that takes on when she talks about the things that she loves and fiercely believes in, her students and the power of literature. Each spring semester for the past few years, Judith's undergraduate creative writing courses culminated in these big readings at the Art Museum. Many of us went to them, because she would run you down the hallway. You know. <laughs> we all heard about these events because Judith peppered Park Hall in our inboxes with flowers and invitations, at least invitation. She wanted us uh, all to be there by giving her students an audience, sometimes an auditorium full of people, but more often her own singular presence. Judith showed her students that their work is important to the world. She didn't just set the bar high, she gave us occasions to which we could rise. I'll end with that. Thank you all. Judith, wish you were here.